Hello, I'm Kit, your friendly feminist cat lady spinster, and welcome to day six of Trabmas. The 12 Days of Trademus is a series looking at people in the trad or traditional movement. And today for day six, we are looking at pure patriarchal power. They are apparently a coach, a Catholic miso-feminist, helping women to be patriarchal wives with patriarchal insights from a patriarch, advocate for a patriarchal family. Take a shot whenever they say patriarch. There is a lot here. And for anyone like myself wondering what a miso-feminist is, a miso-feminist, hatred of feminist women by masculine men and feminine women. And pure patriarchal power says, I'm a miso-feminist. Well, Thanks for clearing that up, buddy. I guess I'll just start from the beginning. A wife and mother is what a girl can be. A girl's future is already decided, and that is to be a biblical, dutiful housewife. And then a few hours later, feminists aren't fighting for equality. They are fighting against masculinity and femininity. Equality is just a bait. Beware. Sometimes I wonder if people think about what they post before they post it, because you literally just posted that girls should grow up to be wives and mothers and that's it. Which is what feminists are against. We believe that men and women should be able to choose their own life path and not have it forced on them because of their sex. Feminists have the kill joys of womanhood by taking away the promised joys in women's life. Save the delight of being a deferential wife, a nurturant mother, and a busy housewife. I don't know if this person gets out much, but there are still stay-at-home wives and mothers. You have options beyond that, but it is still okay to be a stay-at-home wife or mother. No one is saying you can't be that. No one is going to make that illegal. If feminists are pro-woman, why does their dogma condemn femininity, modesty, virginity, motherhood, and housewifehood? I'm going to need a source for that dogma they mention. And yes, feminists do condemn a woman being prized for virginity or being told that she can only be respected if she dresses modestly. Feminist fallacy. If a man and woman argue in the middle of the street, the passersby prejudice the man to be the troublemaker, even though the woman is the real culprit. <laughs> Uh, did this person not create their own fallacy by assuming it was the woman's fault and also assuming the pastors by think the man is the one at fault? Men do cry. When the society accepts men do cry a lot, young boys settle in crying for their every trouble rather than battling it like a man like their male ancestors. Is this person trying to say that men back in the day didn't cry? Also, I don't understand this, this weird idea that if we accept that men cry, they will suddenly become emotional basket cases. You can cry and still be emotionally healthy. In fact, I would say it's more emotionally healthy to cry sometimes than to just convince yourself you're fine and bury it deep inside. I support LGBT, lifting guns, Bible tradition. Feminism and homosexuality. Lesbianism and gayism is highly promoted and normalized by feminists. Because feminists do not like the idea of women marrying a man and serving and obeying him like a good deferential wife. Also, feminists do not want men to unlock the beauty of femininity in a feminine woman and protect her fiercely. What? When men are brainwashed into becoming gays, men will not have the manliness to fight against feminism or to protect their women like a man. This is not the only person who said that feminism created gay people, and I hate to tell them this, but... People have been gay since the beginning of time, since the beginning of people. It's not a new invention. So this account also enjoys making some booklets. And this one tells us the difference between a modern wife and a submissive wife. What about just a wife? Modern. She will not think about your conditions. She will only think about her needs. Submissive. She will understand your every heart condition and also will morally support and motivate you. Modern. She'll make you run to her terms. She will have access to your passwords and more of your confidential things. Submissive. She will trust you, never break her trust. She will never be adamant about knowing your passwords and will respect your personal space. Modern. She will always talk about leaving you even in her faults. Submissive. She will never talk about leaving you even when it's your fault. Modern. She will laugh at you and make fun of you with her friends and colleagues. Submissive. She will never listen to anything bad about you even from her best friends. Modern. She will always keep comparing you with someone. Submissive. She will find more and more reasons to stay with you. So basically what this person is saying is that in every marriage, one person will be the steamroller and one person will be the doormat. That seems like a very sad way to view marriage. Immodest dressing in women is so normalized by feminists that many want to be modest women think that just covering the sexual organs is modesty. You are wrong. Women, your thighs, cleavage, and tummy must be covered. 
Modesty is exactly the opposite of what feminism advises you to wear. I haven't yet received my feminism style guide. Am I doing something wrong? Am I not feminist enough? The disadvantages of patriarchy, which someone comments, love this, I'd rather be my husband's slave than some random person's employee. Under the patriarchy, per this person, women cannot be subject to male gaze as she'll be restricted by her husband from dressing like a prostitute. Women cannot ruin themselves by smoking, drinking, and doping. Uh, is this person aware of how much smoking went on in the 1950s and 60s? Women cannot be depressed in midlife due to spinstership. Women cannot go behind useless careers and whimsical dreams. Women cannot circulate rumors because of household busyness, wifely duties, and motherly responsibilities. Women cannot be free from womanly responsibilities, I'm going to assume this means pregnancy, and also be freely available for licens licentious guys' intentions. Women cannot share bed with strangers as she is wholly owned by a man, morally restricted by the nuptial chain and mentally reserved by faith, femininity, and morality. Women cannot embrace feminism and ruin herself as she is safe and happy under the patriarchy. And they also posted, 1950s, when women were happy and safe under patriarchy. So if women were so happy and safe under patriarchy in the 1950s, then what happened? Why did feminism come about again? I don't, hmm? Is it possible? They weren't all that happy under patriarchy. In the art of raising girls, it is not a shock that today's girls are misled to absolute nonsense by feminism. Parents raise her according to feminist girl raising manual. What manual? Besides that, they think there is girl power to raise girls and feminism to protect girls. Um. Girl power is a feminist drive to make girls idiotic, uncultured, mannerless, and insane. Whereas, feminism is a selfish, ungodly propaganda to make women sex idols, whores, spinsters, and psychiatric patients. The family today is turning matriarchal. Besides the paternal side of the fatherly surname, the family now is like a joint venture partnered by man and woman. Due to equal partnership, the man is neglected and cornered by the wife setting equality. And the poor husbands, who were emasculated by the schools and feminist textbooks, stay silent and get nagged and pecked by the woman. Children observe and absorb the reverse gender roles in the family. Only a patriarchal family can produce manly boys and feminine girls. Only a manly man can lead his family, save them from dangers within the society, and raise his daughter to be the best wife and mother in future. A girl needs the parenting of both father and mother. Only a mother could help during puberty, and only a father could safeguard her and the society. A mother should teach her the golden qualities of being a wife, the secret recipes of favorite family meals, the unpopular wifely trait of forgiveness, and the easy hacks of doing household chores. Always dress up your daughter modestly, thereby preserving her body for the reserved eyes in the future. Equip her with all the essential skills of a duty-bound housewife, because if she fails to do so in her marriage, it is the mother who gets the whole blame. They type that without seeing anything wrong with that. Okay. A father should teach his daughter to respect men. He should not raise her like a princess. They are very big on the feminist princess, which I have never heard before. Let her experience the authority of a man from you, then only she could accept the authority of her future husband. Discipline her and love her as well. Restrict her from late night events, boys only parties, intimate platonic friendships, adult movies, feminism, etc. Teach her about the antics of, lic of licentious guys. Teach her about the wifely concepts of a gentleman. When a girl reaches her, reaches her teenage, let her brew up tea and serve it to her father. Let her iron her father's clothes, thereby knowing the methods of ironing a man's clothes. Let her prepare the family meal, let her mend the torn clothes. By doing these chores, she strained herself to be a deferential wife and nurturant mother in future. The best thing the parents can do is to not break gender stereotypes and shun feminism while raising her. Most parents are so careless about their daughter's dressing during childhood. Many parents excuse that she is a child and modesty should be taught when she becomes mature. But parents don't know that the habit from childhood lasts till old age. A plant can be bent, but not a tree. Likewise, a young girl can be covered up, but not a grown-up girl, as she will have no shame. Let her know that when she is flaunting her exposed body, she is also provoking the parental mm -hmm. eyes of her dad. And this is just really disgusting. And someone commented, she is also provoking the parental eyes of her dad with a little tear emoji. And Pure Picture Empire says, definitely 100% is an unspoken truth. That is disgusting. If you are looking at your daughter that way, no matter what she's wearing, you are gross. The way of a woman. Career is in her way. Her way is cooking and cleaning the home. Hollywood is in her way. Her way is housekeeping and housewifehood. Social service is in her way. Her way is to serve her husband. Animal rights is in her way. Her way is to fulfill her husband's rights. And what are those, please? Reform in society is in her way. Her way is to perform her wifely duty. Business is in her way. Her way is household busyness. So, you know, we've already tried this thing where we tell women that they should just be focused on the home and it didn't turn out that great. Grow down your hair. Be feminine. Be dressed in feminine clothes. Smile like a woman. 
Then you do not need to mention she, her to be identified as a woman. How does one smile like a woman? It is you women who double up your work. Do not blame the patriarchy for your workload. Either do your household duties or do both career and household work without complaining. I cannot believe someone can write that and not see anything wrong with it. A wife's chastity, virginity, hospitality, docility, and servility must be preserved for her husband alone. If women have no shame in sexually objectifying themselves, then some men will have no shame in sexually objectifying and ogling at those shameless pervasive women. But they are aware that no matter what a woman is wearing, if a man wants to objectify her, he will. A wife should adopt to her man's likes. If he likes spicy meals and she likes sweet meals, she should adapt to her man's taste. It doesn't mean that she should never eat what she likes, but when living with her husband, a wife should always adhere to his likes. If she feels hurt for giving up her likes for him, then she should soon pluck out that tinge of feminism in her mind and live according to her man's likes. So hear that ladies? If you have a preference for something that your man doesn't like, that is feminism. And okay, look, the traditional mother is in there. Absolutely. Woman was made for man and not the other way around. She conforms and molds herself to him. It is a beautiful arrangement. Men marry to consume his wife-made food, to wear his wife laundered clothes, and to reside in his wife-cleaned home. So men marry to have a maid? The hem of a woman's skirt should be below the knee. That is the very hallmark of a biblical woman's modesty. The act of bringing life into this world makes a woman's life meaningful, not her degrees and career. Why on earth would someone presume to tell someone else, especially a stranger, what makes their life meaningful? For a happy married wife, a man should control his hands from thrashing his wife, and most importantly, a wife should tame her fiery tongue from nagging, mothering, and bossing her man. So it's more important that a woman doesn't nag a man than for a man to not physically assault his wife? Parents, raise your girl like a boy. Thereby, she becomes a very cheap substandard copy of a man. Women are inferior to men, but women who want to live and be like men become inferior to both men and women. Original women are worth more than cheap female copies of men. Wow, well, I mean, thanks for the honesty. A wife is a deferential woman who is an unpaid maid of her man, bearing his name and bearing him children who will take his name. And someone asked, and what is he to her? Patriarchal Phenomenon, who we've already covered, responded, her master, how Christ is to the church. Churches have spread the gospel of Christ. Church is known by Christ's name and not Christ in church's name. He is her dominant husband who takes a decision. He takes on the authority over her from her father after marriage. He is the provider and protector of his wife who submissively serves and obeys him, thus balancing the roles and believing in inequality and equity arises a good family. And then pure patriarch says, nothing more to say. Phenomenon has nailed it to a T. And this person asks how to make him take on this role. And pure says, you cannot make a man patriarchal. It should come from him. It should be within him. If you try to make him or mold him, he will misread your action as mothering or nagging. But a wife's submissiveness and femininity can amplify a man's masculinity, making him a good patriarch. Well, I do appreciate when they're upfront with the women are beneath men because so, so much of the time it's we're equal in God's eyes, but we have separate roles. And it's like, no, you're putting the woman underneath men. When you say a woman has to obey and be led by a man, you're putting women beneath men. Some people think it's a troll, but I'm torn. I, I do think this is a real person. Given their use of Indian feminism hashtags, I do think they are based or currently located or whatever in India, but I do think they're real. And either way, people are taking them seriously. So anyway, that is it for day six of Tradmas. I hope you enjoyed it as much as possible considering the content. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.